There it is. Twisted Fate reveal. Only fools play the hand they're dealt. Twisted Fate. Quick attack, play a destiny card. But I've seen you draw cards, okay. I'm always up for a round or two. So he gives you a choice of three cards. Hang on, I need to actually see what these are. Refill one spell mana, draw one, deal two and stun the strongest enemy, or deal one to all enemies in the enemy nexus. So it basically has whichever play effect you want. I think it's luck. Stacking the odds. <laughs> I guess you can win them all. It's kind of a neat animation. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Three times I see you play a card each round. I play a Destiny card. Holy shit. So what? So every time you play a card three times a round, you get to activate one of those? Am I getting yeah. that right? It looks like it's a randomly selected one. It looks like the blue card... Yeah, it's randomly selected. And there's... We just saw a pick a card there. Or it just does... It makes sure to do all three. There's an order? Yeah, it's not random. That makes sense. Lady Luck is smiling. Interesting. Yeah, it's not random. It's it's in a specific order. Wow. How do we evaluate this? Let's go ahead. Let's evaluate this really quickly. So one of these triggers right away. He's a four mana two two. This one is basically turns him into a three mana two two draw card. That's like that's kind of not bad. Blue card immediately turns him into like shadow assassin. Um, obviously no elusive, but you know that's a good card and he has upsides. Gold card turns him into a. Uh, it's like a Arachnoid Sentry. You can't really target it too much. Red card. The the flexibility of being able to like deal one to all enemies. The, the flexibility of this card really isn't that bad. And the level up condition seems pretty good. Um, when you've seen you draw eight plus cards. For a round or two. How do you like cheese out draws? Because that, that he's probably gonna be hard to level, man. Eight cards is so hard to level. That's so, so, so tricky. There, there must be, like, some some support. The new, like, draw two from Bilgewater looks really good on him. Rummage looks good. I mean, progress day is going to be okay, but you need to be mana efficient on your draws. Black Market Merchant. A 2-2-2. Two, 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 when you draw an enemy card. Oh! So this is, this is an archetype from Hearthstone, basically, which is the idea of playing kind of like your opponent's deck against them a little bit. There's a lot of, like, rogue decks in Hearthstone that do this kind of thing. I, I really like it. We'll, we'll see how it actually ends up working out in this game. But I like the kind of idea of it. And it also fulfills, like, the mill condition. We are thinking about building, like, a mill Maokai deck. There's some toss cards. And when you draw from the enemy deck, you are basically allowing them to deck out faster. So that could be really, really cool. When it, it, it activates on itself, which means you're drawing a card that's going to be discounted. Wow, this card's not bad. Holy shit. It's a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. It draws an enemy card, which means it might be like a low synergy card that doesn't really work for your deck, but it draws a card that's discounted by one. That's like a big deal. Obviously, this is Trolley against Draven and Ash. I think those are the two cards in the game that right now control top of deck. So against something like that, like if they do Draven's Biggest Fan, again, nobody actually runs Draven's Biggest Fan, but in a spot, you can like you can steal a value card like Ash's Arrow. It's hilarious against Ash, I guess. The card stays for them? No, No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't stay for them. That's that's actually a pretty playable card at two mana. I think so. Pool Shark. When I'm summoned to draw one fleeting next round. Ooh. Oh. That's kind of interesting. So you can play this on like turn one. And then on turn two, you draw one fleeting. This is not a good one drop. Because to be able to use the card that you draw from this, you would have to hope you find a, like a one or a two mana card off of this. So you can't really play this on turn one. Like, it's pretty bad, too. Um, I don't know. The fact that it's fleeting is a really, really big limitation. I see this as... I, I feel like this might be a worse Averroes and Sentry. It costs one less mana, and it's a summon instead of a Death Wish. 
But the fleeting is a really, really big deal. And don't get me wrong, it's got synergy points. It, th you will run this with like a synergy deck and like a Twisted Fate deck or something like that, for sure. It's like, you, you have ways of using this card. Good at aggro. Yeah, you can definitely fit into something like aggro. Discard the card with like, get excited rummage. There's a lot of ways of using this, for sure. For sure. It does need to hit a synergy. Just in terms of evaluating this in a vacuum, I think it's like, it's playable. It's very playable. And it hits synergy points. This is a pretty solid card overall, for sure. The fleeting, it like, just means you will often not be able to play it on turn one or two if you want. Brash Gambler. To play me, discard two. Attack, draw two fleeting. Holy shit. Oh my god. Wow. Attack, draw two fleeting. That's a little crazy. To play me, discard two. So how many different ways are there of cheating play effects? Because if you can get this on board without playing it then you can get around a really, really big discard. And there's a lot of ways of doing that. For example, like something like resurrecting it is going to be easy. I think there isn't there one of the new cards that has the ability to get around play effects. The Ionia one wouldn't really work for this, I think, because you'd need a discount card in either Ionia and Bilgewater, and that might not happen. This is really interesting. There's a lot of ways to use this. It's like you can run it in like a discard deck. <laughs> it's usually going to get at least one attack off, right? Spectral from SI. Spectral Maiden. It's a little slow and it's a little late. But you can run that kind of thing. It's a it's a very, very specific synergy card. She's not really going to be, I think, good enough on her own. But if she hits synergy, she could be good. So that's Twisted Fate. And then his card is pick a card. This I'm is almost certainly his champ card. Gay. Shuffle a card from hand into deck to draw three fleeting at next round start. Draw three fleeting at next round start. You really can't play this early at all. It's like, if you play this on turn five, you'll have, you know, maximum nine mana. That that would be kind of okay. Like, so playing it on, like, turn four or five. This card looks really potentially quite good. It looks... So, th this looks really, really, really busted uh, on surface level. However, I suspect that the fleeting might end up being a really big downside for a lot of decks. But this card looks really good. This card looks really good. You get two turns to play them. <clears throat> At next round start. Well, it's it's one turn to play, right? It's just, it's always next turn. It's only plus one card advantage if you manage to cast all fleeting cards. Yeah, exactly. It's a gamble deck. You do your stakes to draw something that might win the game. Pretty much, yeah. Like, that's the thing. You, when you draw fleeting cards, you have to hope you get kind of, like, the right one. And that's that's kind of, like, how they've put, like, this kind of gambler uh, in the game. Rummage is insane with this. Yeah, Rummage is pretty good with this, I guess. I don't know. I mean, isn't that just worse than rummaging, like, a chump wump? Yes. But it does combo with that. It can, like, bail you out in a pinch if you have no better option. But you won't want this with Rummage. Play the fleeting cards to trigger deep faster. <clears throat> the fleeting draw cards yeah, yeah yeah i mean you can you can basically just have a shit ton of draw get through your deep deck there's a lot of combos with this there's a lot of combos with this drawing a lot of cards is good for nautilus yeah but then you'd have to run nautilus i think that this card is gonna probably find a home in kind of like like i don't think you really need to hit synergy points for this card necessarily you need a deck that has the right curve for this basically you need something that doesn't really have enough um like expensive cards so that you can make this more reliable the question is how good is twisted fate the, the question on everyone's mind so twisted fate i actually a lot of you guys are saying his front side isn't amazing i actually quite like his front side the flexibility of these three cards is pretty powerful i understand it's a four mana two two of course but this is like premium flexibility like the ability to go into, like, gold or red is really important, and blue is just, like, a stable choice for when gold and red don't hit. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying you necessarily would main deck this without synergy, um, but it, it's not, like, inherently terrible. Twisted Fate is nuts, the best build champ. Yeah, so I, I want to talk a little bit about the idea of flexibility. It's really, really important to consider, right, when you're evaluating a card like this. I've, I've gone on the record in the past saying Twin Disciplines is partly a bad card because of its weak flexibility and i i think that a card like that doesn't really benefit much from flexibility at all but in reality the way the fact that you have three options the fact that one of them is generally good against any board state and the two of them hit very very specific states where they are nuts is really 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 powerful flexibility right if you're against like a spider deck 
you you play red card and it will win you the game. Like that's something that something like the flexibility from twin disciplines literally cannot do, right? You your opponent develops into you. Like twisted fate the the threat of so like the thing is, the threat of cards forces your opponent to play in specific ways, right? Which means like if you have an arachnoid sentry, your opponent kind of has to think about that and they have a hard time developing into your attack. The twisted fate threatens that without committing to it, which is the same thing by the way that concussive palm does. And that when you have the idea of that threat, a non-committal threat, that's really 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 powerful. The idea that you might play gold card will force the opponent into some attacks that they might not have wanted to take. Even though you don't, like, you would just have a twisted fate in your hand, and you can play him with anything. You don't have to play him with gold card. So, that, like, that's, that's premium flexibility. That's really valuable. This is, like, the best flexibility you can possibly have, which is two, like, nut cards in very specific cases, and then one card that, in a general, when nothing's happening, you want to play proactive value, is pretty good. It's not, it's not super amazing, but it's fine, right? You can totally just play this. I think twisted fate's pretty good. I, I think it's, it's yeah, it's, out of, out of the build butter champions we've seen so far, this is definitely the strongest one. Uh, I mean, he's solid, right? He's hard to level. Um, that's going to be pretty tricky. You'll have to build a deck around leveling him. And I don't know how reliably you can do that. Um, but the level payoff is pretty big. He's going to be very hard to protect at two health. And like, yeah, he has to see you dry eight cards. He's really hard to level. A lot of the new champions are not all of them, but just many of them are just really hard to level compared to what we currently have in the game. They're making it a little bit harder overall. So yeah, I think that's that's kind of like my my general impressions on Twisted Fate. I think it's totally fine. Like he's he's got a good champ card as well. When you double draw Twisted Fate, the fact that his champ card works well with him is important. You got you got to evaluate the double attack there for sure. Why quick attack? It, it's kind of weird that he has like quick attack on that stat line. It's just like yeah, don't get me wrong. His stats his stats aren't really great, but I mean he's a perfectly playable card. There's also this thing in Runeterra, which, you know, we don't really know enough about Bilgewater, but there's this phenomenon in Runeterra where there's not a lot of good four mana cards proactive in the game, and Twisted Fate helps that, right? There's like, that's part of why Allegiance is kind of oppressive, which is kind of funny. That's part of why we've always been in like an eternal Allegiance beta, because there's not, there's not good four mana cards outside of Allegiances. In fact, there, there's almost none. Like the proactive four drop. You know, Chronicle of Ruins one thing, but you need a board state for a lot of specific four mana cards. So yeah, Twisted Fate, you know, coming out of four, that's fine. Standalone. Yeah, I mean Standaloneing this isn't even that bad. He's got like a good a good stat line to protect, I guess. But yeah, I don't see him as that bad at all. I, I see him as I don't I, I wouldn't say I, I don't think he's likely to be tier one competitive, but I see him as strong. Like he's he's solid. There's nothing nothing wrong with him at all. So he's got the level. How good is that level? Probably pretty bad. Probably pretty bad. Like, it's powerful when it hits, but it's really hard to hit. That's what I mean. I, I shouldn't say bad as in it's not strong when it hits. I just mean, like, the fact that it'll almost never hit just makes it, like, the average value of expecting the back end is pretty low. 